Hi, everybody. My name is Kelsey, and this is Juliana. Welcome to Seeds to Forest, Choosing the Right Tree. Um, we're going to get going in about two more minutes or so. We'll let a few more people join us. Um, in the meantime, if this is your first webinar with us, um, just know that um, you are muted. You're able to unmute yourself, but um, please remain muted. We can remute you if uh, we see that there's noise in the background. Um, you can ask questions anytime by typing them. So you'll see a question box um, and then I'll be monitoring that and I'll ask Juliana your questions as we go. Uh, there will also be some polls, so we'll let you know when those come up and we'll ask you questions. Uh, and finally, we are recording the webinar, so if you can't stay the whole time, um, I'll follow up tomorrow with the recording. So about one more moment, or one more minute or so. We just wanted to give everyone a heads up that this is a family friendly um, beginner level webinar, just so that you know, um, and we're looking to engage with everybody, but it is um, more for beginners. So if some of this stuff seems a little bit simple, uh, just, just a heads up. All right, well, it's 6.30, so we'll get going. Doesn't look like anybody else has joined in the last minute or so, so you all heard my spiel. Um, you can go to the next slide and I'll uh, do the introduction. Okay, so uh, before we get going, some of you may have been to the part one of this webinar, and so welcome to part two if you missed it. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about how um, this event is brought to you by Reforest London, and Julianne, I'll touch more on who we are. Um, but in addition to uh, being a tree planting charity that a lot of people are familiar with in, in London, we're also, in 2019, we we're the founders of the Westminster Pond Centre for Environment and Sustainability. Um, so this exciting project will be a community hub with services and programming that promote environmental excellence sustainability, health, and well-being across our region. Um, and so through the Westminster Pond Centre, we have the Signal Boost Initiative. And this is a program uh, that allows us to dramatically increase the number of public and volunteer educational opportunities that are available in London. Um, so eventually, we'll be holding events at the centre, but in the meantime, we'll be offering uh, lots of webinars. And this event is made possible from support from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, and we always want to acknowledge our uh, largest sponsor, um, Canada Life. So go ahead. So while we're at it, I'll just let you know about a couple more events that are coming up. Um, so right now we have three more booked for uh, one next Wednesday, all about living zero waste, and then one the following Saturday, all about permaculture. And at the end of the month, we'll have one all about uh, pollinator gardens. So we're always adding more events all the time, and they're always free, and they cover a wide range of topics. Um, so feel free to check out our website, reforestlondon.ca, to check those out. Um, and then if you're not already a part of the Seeds to Forest Homeschool Edition, um, that's a program where, um, for elementary school kids, we offer a lot of nature-based activities you can do at home with the whole family. So check that out also on our website. Um, and then if you ever have any questions about the Signal Boost Initiative, you can reach out to me at my email that's there. So I believe that's it for me, but before I pass it over, I'll just do my usual starting polls. So I'm going to launch a couple of little polls. First is... How many people are joining from your device tonight? So is there one person on the line, two, three, or more than three? We'll give it a few more seconds to let everybody answer. Ding. 
and no one else is really responding, so I'll close it. But um, for now, it's 60% uh, have one person and 40% have two people. All right. Thank you. And now my second one. And that's it for now. All right. Go ahead. Perfect. All right. So thanks so much for joining us, everyone. My name is Juliana. I'm the school program coordinator with Reforest London. Um, if you're doing our Seeds to Forest homeschool edition, I'm the person behind the newsletter and the activities. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Like Kelsey already mentioned, this is part two of uh, two. So we're really excited. And this is all about the ins and outs of getting to know what tree might best suit your backyard. Um, so this is in conjunction with the tree depots that we have recently launched um, in London. So if you are looking to get a tree or you've already put it in um, an order form for a tree, hopefully you know a little bit about your backyard and you've chosen a good species for that area. If not, and you're looking to continue and, and to add more trees or more shrubs to your yard, um, we're gonna go through a little bit of um, content onto how you can better get to know your backyard. Now, Kelsey, hopefully had sent up the handout that we have created for you. It's a bit of a guidebook and a worksheet. And we're just kind of gonna go through um, bits and pieces of that guidebook that you and your kids can go through together to get to know your backyard. Um, it's available as a handout in your menu as well. So you should all see it right here within uh, GoToWebinar. Awesome. All right, so just a quick little breakdown of what we're gonna do today. Uh, so we're talking a little bit about Reforest London and why we love trees. We're gonna talk about choosing the right tree, uh, what tree you might choose, planting your tree, how to properly plant the tree, and then caring for your tree. That last step is always really important for a healthy and successful tree. All right, so this time I'm just gonna turn off my webcam, but I am here the whole time. Uh, again, if you have any questions, like Kelsey said, you can type them in the question box and we will do our best to answer those as we go along. All right, so Reforest London, uh, if you have not heard of us before, we are a non-for-profit uh, charity um, that is dedicated to partnering with our community to enhance the environmental and human health of the forest city through the benefits of trees. Um, so Reforest London really believes in planting native trees. Uh, we want to, our three main goals are to empower the public to make sure that they have all the tools necessary to make change. We want to impact the ecosystem health in a positive way. So by contributing more trees to the environment, we are always going to be benefiting the uh, ecosystem and through education. So we do do um, our school tree planting program. We also do um, initiatives like the Signal Boost initi Initiative, which is there to, again, help and educate and to spread the word about the importance of trees and caring for the local environment. All right, so our first poll question. Why choose a native tree? So again, like I said, this is a family-friendly beginner webinar. So some of you may or may not know the answer to this one, but why choose a native tree? There, when you go to the garden center, there are so many different options there to choose from. Sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming, uh, but we're looking to really push why native trees are important. Reforest London really stands behind native trees, um, and it's important to understand the benefits and, and why they are so important. So 70% of people have responded, and they all say the same thing so far. Oh. Uh, oh. Still coming in. Maybe a few more seconds. Perfect. I know sometimes it's a tricky question. When you go to the garden center, you think everything is going to be a great option and they're all wonderful. And, and it's true they are, but native trees have very specific purposes. All right. And it looks like maybe one or two can't. Um, the question or the poll isn't working, so they're um, responding in the question box, so we do see you. And uh, yeah, everyone's got it right. They all said uh, they've adapted to living here and support diverse wildlife. Perfect, absolutely. So um, you guys all got it right. So they're, they're meant to be here. They've been here for lots and lots of years, and they totally support the ecosystem. So um, the example that we have on the screen right now is a black cat chickadee. They depend on all of our native conifers as habitat in the wintertime. So we want to continue to support our wildlife um, and, and native trees do exactly what they're supposed to do. All right, so we're going to take a little, back, a little look at your backyard. Uh, and we're going to look at the conditions that you need to understand to then choose the 
tree that would best suit your vector. So this is one of our uh, backyards in London. They have quite a few trees growing back there. It's not just open field. So the question is between those photos, is there one that might better suit, better support the habitat? And we wanna be looking at the size of the trees, taking a look at the, the backyard itself. So this is the kind of tree that you could pick up at a depot and that we would uh, be handing away. So this is a potted tree, but it very quickly it can grow in, and does grow into a very large mature tree. So we wanna make sure that we're considering space. It's a very key factor when looking to plant your tree. So one of the activities in the guidebook that we suggest to people who are looking to get a new tree is to put in a, a, a map and to draw a map of your backyard to get a good understanding of the things that are already in place that a, planting a new tree would um, affect. So things that we would like to highlight on here is that looking for power lines is extremely important. People forget sometimes that those run through big parts of your backyard. And so looking through power lines, um, making sure that you're not planting directly underneath them um, is something that you really want to focus on um, and make sure that you avoid uh, if possible. We want to make sure that we're looking around for larger trees that are in the area. Larger trees can outcompete a young tree. Uh, young trees really depend on, on sunlight and moisture and larger trees need more sunlight and more moisture. You also want to make sure that you highlight any human introduced features like decks, trampolines, or driveways. And then lastly, our suggestion would be then to, once you have all those uh, key factors highlighted, to then indicate where you would possibly like to introduce a new tree to your yard. So this is our finished map. You can clearly see the power lines are on the left side, so we're not going to plant anything under the power lines. The trampoline is in our lower left corner and we have a large garden to the right. So the pink X's are marking where we could potentially add a new tree to this backyard. All right, so once you've gotten to know your backyard space-wise, there are three conditions that you need to consider before planting or choosing your tree. You wanna look at the light conditions. So plants need sunlight for photosynthesis. Uh, different species have different light requirements. So it's really important that you um, discover what kind of light is available in those locations you indicated on your map. Some leaves can actually get sunburned. So trees that require par partial shade um, really need that afternoon shade so that they don't get um, the leaf sunburn. Moisture is really important. When you're looking at the moisture in your yard, you want to think about does the soil in your yard get extremely muddy after a rainstorm? Uh, if you think about this time of year leading into our hot, dry summers, does the soil get dry and look cracked quite often? Are there any high points in your backyard that dry up very quickly or low-lying areas that tend to hold water, making your soil wetter for longer periods of time? And lastly is your soil type. So we have three main different types of soil that we could be looking at. We have sandy soil, uh, which is kind of like sand at the beach. So water and nutrients drain very quickly from sandy soil. And we need to keep that in mind because some trees may require fertilization because of sandy soil. Clay soil, if you ever think about modeling clay or Play-Doh that you could um, mold into a shape, um, clay soil is very similar to that. It's got very tiny pores and everything is interlocked and it's very tightly um, holding together. So water tends to collect and hold in clay soil. So you get very wet uh, conditions. And loam, now loam is like, if you are, have loam in your backyard, you have won the lottery. Loam is the perfect combination of sandy soil, clay soil and organic material. And it is a gardener's best friend. So in this case, if you have loam soil, you, you're, you're good to go and you just wanna make sure that um, perhaps a species of tree you're looking at doesn't require more drainage um, than, than loam can provide. All right, next question. Have you ever tested your soil before? Uh, 
the poll has been launched. Perfect. Some people assume that soil is soil and it's actually um, not quite <laughs> true uh, within even the city of London just by um, separating out different blocks of like from one street corner to another street corner you can get very different soil types so it's really important that you take the opportunity to get to know your soil um, and that can even help when planting gardens vegetable gardens front flower beds soil type is really um, important for the health of your tree so getting to know your soil is always a great option. Okay, the responses are slowing down and 90% uh, said no, and just 10% said yes. Perfect, yeah, it's not maybe something very common that you think of doing, but it's a, it's a great way to get, to get to know your backyard. All right, so the way that we are going to make our soil milkshake, if you <laughs> would like to call it that, we suggest filling a jar, any kind of, um, soup can jar uh, with two-thirds uh, with water. You want to dig down about 30 to 45 centimeters and then add the soil that you've excavated into um, the jar. You don't need to include the first couple of centimeters where the grass is growing. Anything with the grass growing or the roots, that's like topsoil and we don't need to include that in our soil sample. So you're going to leave this, the grass to the side, everything underneath the layer of grass and down about 30 to 45 centimeters is what you're going to add to the jar. Then going to put the lid on nice and tight on that jar, shake vigorously for a couple minutes, get your arm workout in, and then let it sit down. Let it sit somewhere so that it, the soil can, can settle. And hopefully, you will end up with this lovely concoction. So we are hoping that the soil particles will start to settle into layers, and that will help us have a better understanding of the soil composition in your backyard. So once the layers have all settled out, um, it's a lot easier for you to, to physically see the difference um, between the particles. This, this example here is showing you that 70% of the uh, soil is sand, made up of sand, 10% is silt, and the remaining 20% is clay. So clay particles are usually gonna be floating up in the water uh, column. They're usually up a little bit higher too. They don't uh, stick together very well. Like they in water, they won't be sticking together. So they'll kind of be floating up above. Um, in our manual that we have created and that is available to you, it talks um, more in depth about how to uh, measure out the soil sample. But you can clearly see the difference in the the coloration um, and the coarseness of the soil. Okay. Space. We again we talked about making sure that there's no power lines above, but you also want to remember that trees are a long-term commitment, or so we hope. Uh, some trees can grow for hundreds of years. Uh, the best example that I can think of uh, at the Westminster Pond Center, we do have a large white oak. It's our heritage white oak, and it's over 230 years old. So if given the appropriate conditions, trees can live in an urban setting for a very long time. So you want to make sure that you're prepared for that and that you have enough space to give them that opportunity to grow. Some trees can grow over 25 meters tall, while others can only grow around 12 meters. So depending on where you're looking to add a tree, if you have a lot of shade already in your yard and you're looking for an understory tree, there are trees that will only grow to be 12 meters tall. You also wanna make sure, um, and, and don't be afraid of trees that are gonna grow tall because their canopy will rise up nice and high um, and won't be low to the ground. Um, for example, a maple tree is a great example of a tree with a high canopy. So don't be afraid uh, of those kinds of individuals. All right, so some things that we want to think about when it, we're talking about space for the tree, how tall it will grow, what shape it will have. So some trees grow out wide. So my best example for that would be any kind of spruce tree. They have a very large, like, wide reaching skirt, um, so they can grow um, very wide. How far are you from other existing trees, sidewalks, or fences? So sidewalks and fences pro, um, prove a challenge for trees. Um, their roots are usually too, too deep in the soil, so they do end up having to fight with fences or to fight with the sidewalk. So we really want to be cautious of that when planting your tree. All right, on to the good stuff. So once you've identified the light requirements in your yard, uh, the moisture conditions in your soil, 
and what kind of soil and space you have, we would like you to fill out the chart that's in your um, handbook. So there are multiple columns um, and multiple rows created where you can fill out location A as your first choice. And then you may be lucky enough to have three or four different locations that you're looking. And you want to do your soil sample, making sure that the soil there is all um, the same, making sure the light conditions maybe change from space to space, and you want to fill it out accordingly. You can then bring um, the sheet with you either to a depot or um, onto our online toolkit. So we have a, quite a few different options that you can look at when looking to select um, a tree based off of the yard requirements that we've already considered. So we're going to walk you through just a couple. Um, the first one that we're going to look at is our Ontario Tree Atlas. Now the Ontario Tree Atlas is for native trees. The photo on the left is the like welcome page there. It shows all the different uh, regions in Ontario. So you would choose the southwest region if you are joining us from London. The photo on the right is a zoomed in um, version. Once you click on the southwest region, it gives you this zoomed in photo. And then from that zoomed in photo, you would choose the London belt that, that is there. That, that is our grow zone. And for some of you who may not know this, our grow zone is 7E-6. Uh, so from that grow zone, you can even take that to a nursery and tell them that you're in grow zone 7E6 and they will help you choose plants that do well in that zone. Uh, below, when you scroll down on the Ontario Atlas page, there's multiple um, lists of species that grow in this area and are native to this area. So the first couple that popped up were the alternating leaf dogwood, an American beech, and an American chestnut but there are lots of other options. I could only capture so much in, in that screenshot. All right, so the next tool um, is a little bit more advanced. So if you're looking to get a little bit more in depth uh, with your analysis of um, plants that are, are native trees and shrubs, can plant is a great option. So um, from the can plant welcome page, the, that's the top photo. Uh, you would then go scroll down and it says plant species. What plant species are we looking to dive into? And so for this presentation, we chose trees, shrubs, vines, woody plants. But they have quite a lot of different options that you can go for. So once you don't know the conditions of your backyard, you can then choose, choose away. So after you've chosen the trees and shrubs um, or the woody plants, sorry, uh, you're then going to cl click on the native range. It says Ontario. Uh, we don't want to talk about the introduced range because we're looking for anything that's native and meant to be here. Uh, as you continue to scroll down, it'll say light requirements. And then depending on the requirements that you have chosen uh, and seen in your backyard, you click which requirement you have in your backyard. The moisture requirements, talking about how wet your backyard is or how dry. Then we talk about our, our soil texture. All right, so our soil test that we did. Uh, our growth form, so if you're looking for trees and shrubs, you can click off multiple in, in that growth form category, so trees and shrubs. Drought tolerant is a great option to have here because of climate change and that the fact that we live in an urban setting. Uh, being drought tolerant is becoming more and more important. The urban environment is a harsh environment for trees, lots of compaction, um, sometimes there's limited amounts of nutrients. Um, and drought tolerance is really important. And then you can even choose if you are looking for an evergreen, which is our trees that are coniferous, green year round, or a deciduous tree that loses its leaves in the fall. And lastly, the, the last checkbox there is eco zone. So we are in a mixed woods plane um, for anybody who wanted to know. And from there, it will then uh, generate a list of species that you can choose from. Okay. So this is our Reforest London guide. So we have two um, guides that you can refer to uh, if you are living in the London area. So in the top tab, it says resources where that uh, red circle is. And then on the left, there's a re another red circle around choosing the right species. And then below, there are two different um, windows that will open up. You can click on either trees, so choosing the right tree, or you can even click on the shrub option. And then the PDF will pop up of species that are recommended for the London area. So the green zone is a great option. They're all 
native to southwestern Ontario and grow naturally in the London area. These should be your first choice if you're looking to add native trees to the to the area. Um, the second option would be our yellow column, our use with caution. Sometimes they occur here, but not naturally. Um, so these should be used sparingly and not in naturalization projects. So again, you would want to use this in conjunction um, with one of the other two tools to help um, select with the backyard conditions you have. And these are all your native uh, options. Reforest London recommends that we don't plant anything in that red zone. It's either a non-native species or it can become an invasive problem and it ends up out competing our native trees. So we don't recommend planting anything in the red. And then the blue section here is our at risk. So it's a species at risk under the Endangered Species Act. And there are some really unique trees there that you can take a look at and perhaps your backyard fits those species. Juliana. Yes. We have a question that came in from Abby. Uh, what trees do well in clay? Um, and she said, I ordered a yellow birch, silver maple, and white spruce. Mm. I think this, the, the white spruce, I believe, would, would do okay. Yellow birch usually like it quite wet as well. So I think that the yellow birch would do fine as well. Um, but again, I would always want to like confirm that by going on and, and doing your, your backyard test or you even referring to that can plant resource. Um, she can plug in her, her backyard conditions and, and see if those species pop up. But thanks for the question, Abby. I can add, um, so Brian typed an answer, so I'll Perfect. say that to everybody. She said silver maple prefers moist soil, um, so you should be okay there. Uh, white spruce can be grown almost anywhere, so that should be okay. And then yellow birch likes moist soils. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to how to plant the tree, which is always the, the fun part. Picking it out is, is enjoyable, but planting it is, is definitely my favorite part. So before we dig, uh, it's really important. A lot of people may forget about this step, but Reforest Bonin really wants to um, emphasize the importance before doing any digging that you call to request underground utility locates. Um, living in an urban setting, there are lots of wires and pipes and gas lines that run beneath your backyard and you might not even know it. Um, so it's really important that you call or you can go online and submit an online ticket. The request for a locate is free but it does require five business days before you, um, you plant. If you process to, to get someone actually into your backyard, they will do a really quick check. They will put some flags or even some spray paint down in the event that there is something you need to be aware of before digging. So this is the website you would go to, ontariooncall.com. Uh, you would click on the homeowners because you are a homeowner that is requesting a locate. And then they'll get you to, to just fill out the form about where you're located um, on a map, your address, so they can come in and do a check. Okay, steps to planting your tree. Step one, choosing the location, right? So making sure that you've given um, the consideration to space, which we've already have done if we're using our guidebook. Step two, making sure you dig the hole. So you wanna make sure that you're digging the hole twice as wide, as the pot is, and it wants to be just as deep as your pot is. So a really great tip is actually placing your tree in the hole as you are digging it to make sure it's deep enough. Uh, we always wanna make sure that you've got a nice wide base to make sure that the roots have space to grow. We don't want to dig our hole and it be too um, pointy at the end. Step three, please don't plant your tree with the black bucket attached, take the bucket off. Um, the container is not meant to, to go in the ground. Um, if uh, by some chance you get a smaller tree that has a cocoa pot, so it kind of looks like um, it's a coconut husk that the tree has been planted in, those can actually go into the ground, but the hard plastic pots that most trees come in cannot be planted. So make sure you take the pot off and you massage those roots, making sure um, to wake them up and let them know that they're no longer stuck in that little plastic pot. They can wake up and move freely. Step four is placing your tree in the hole, making sure you're filling the soil back and making sure you don't fill the soil over the base of the plant. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are keeping that, the top of the tree of the pot level with the soil around it. We're going to gently 
damp on the uh, soil around the tree base, making sure we get rid of any air pockets. We don't want any water to get trapped and sit in those um, potential spots as they could produce root rot. And step six, uh, we're going to water the tree well, um, making sure um, you add mulch, uh, any kind of shredded bark. We recommend natural bark, nothing that's got any dyes or additives to it. Continue watering for the first three years of the plant's life is extremely important. Uh, even though you might think we get lots of rain, sometimes it rains really hard. Uh, new trees require lots of nutrients and lots of water to grow and be um, successful. So please make sure you continue to water your tree. Uh, this step, uh, step six is usually where you can also introduce some fertilizer if you feel necessary. Um, but we recommend not um, fertilizing with strictly um, too much manure. Uh, we recommend you mix the manure in with some compost. Too much nitrogen wouldn't be good for the tree. So you really want to avoid a strict manure mix. You would like to, if you would like to add anything to it, uh, compost is a great option. All right, mulching your tree. We would like to see how many people know which method is the best method to mulch your tree. Option A or option B. Now, very often you see both methods being used even by um, some municipalities. Uh, and it's just because some people are unaware of the, the damage one can cause over another. So you just wanna uh, really think about um, if you would like to be snuggled up nice and close to that much warm chipped up material. Okay, so 50% of people have voted so far. Okay. Give them a few more moments. People seem to have stopped responding, but so far everyone has said B. Is the proper way to mulch. Nice, that's very much correct. So that is what we would refer to as a mulch donut. So making sure that the mulch is pulled away from the trunk um, and spread out at least a good 30, even 50 centimeters from um, the base of the tree, making sure it's spread out nice and wide. Mulch is really important for keeping moisture um, in the soil for the tree to um, absorb, but it's also really important for outcompeting the weeds. Uh, weeds and trees both um, rely on the same nutrients that are found in that soil, and if we have less weeds to compete with, then the tree will definitely do better. With the mulch nice and tight around the trunk in uh, photo A, you could even end up with a little bit of trunk rot, and we don't want to see that happen to a freshly planted tree. All right, adding a tree collar for protection is great. So the tree collar is really beneficial in the summertime when you've uh, planted your tree and perhaps you haven't gotten around to mulching it right away. Uh, the weeds will start to grow and you'll be tempted to take the whippersnapper in and get nice and close and, and cut the weeds back. Um, we don't recommend doing that. Um, with the tree collar there, if you were to take the whippersnapper, it would be um, slightly protected, but we always recommend hand pulling weeds out to make sure that you get the entire weed with the roots. The tree collar is also really beneficial in the winter time. It uh, assists in keeping away tiny mice, um, field mouse, that would want to um, eat on the bark of a young tree. Uh, rabbits too are, are notorious for eating the bark of a young tree. So a tree collar really helps protect um, the tree year round. The only time you would want to remove a tree collar is once the tree has uh, grown so much that the collar and the trunk of the tree are touching uh, all the way around. That's when you know it's an okay time to remove the tree collar. Other than that, we recommend you keep the tree collar on. All right, so watering thirsty trees, like we said, it's really important that we give them lots of water for those first couple years. Um, the photo on the left with the hose is a really great option. Uh, we always recommend a slow trickle or a, a deep watering is best. Uh, if you only were to put the hose on for a little while or put the sprinkler on, that's only going to water the first couple centimeters of the soil. You really want a deep soak uh, for those roots. So letting the trickle come through the hose is a great option or our photo on the right, uh, either a jug, a milk jug or a pail, uh, reforest leaden 
um, does the pail method where you drill small holes in the bottom of your pail, you stick it nice and close to your tree and the, the water will slowly dissipate out the bottom of the pail. So that's another great slow watering method. Okay, our tree depots, what everyone's been waiting for. We're super excited to have been able to offer this um, again this year with the current uh, COVID situation, we were a little bit uh, unsure, but uh, lo and behold, we, we've we've done it and it's it's going really well. Um, we only have a few selections left already. So the next couple of slides are going to tell you a little bit more about how you could potentially get whatever is still left. We are running slim on inventory, but there is potential for another depot later on. So we are doing contactless pickup and uh, an online order form um, is the best way that we could offer this to you. So we are um, hosting the depot on the JOT form. Um, so this, this is the link here. You can also go to Reforest London um, and click on programs and then neighborhood tree depot. And below our neighborhood tree depot, it'll have the 2020 spring tree form. And that's where it will take you to our current inventory of what we, we have left. But if you feel like what you are seeing there isn't exactly what you're looking for, we do recommend signing up for our Reforest London newsletter. And that will keep you up to date on when the next depot comes. So you can get first crack at some of those species that have gone within the first 12 hours of the uh, order form going live. All right, so some upcoming signal boost events like Kelsey mentioned. We do have a zero waste 101 living plastic free on the 17th permaculture uh, on saturday june 20th and the pollinator pathways on tuesday the 30th again if you're interested in doing any of our seeds to forest homeschool edition it's all outdoor nature-based um, activities um, again relating them back to trees and in the environment um, if you have any questions you can visit reforestlandon.ca or emailing kelsey about any of the upcoming webinars we want to make sure that we thank our sponsors. Without them, these programs um, this time wouldn't be possible. So we want to thank Canada Life, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the City of London, and the uh, TD Friends of the Environment Foundation. If you have any questions about how to get your hands on some trees, we do have an email for our staff member, Brad. He's available at relief at reforestlondon.ca. And continue to check the, the um, Reforest London Facebook and our website for any updates. So now that you know how to plant a tree properly, you know how to choose a tree that will be successful in your yard, this is your call to action. Um, it's a little action that can go a long way to improving your natural environment. And we would love for everyone to take this opportunity to plant a tree and to really help improve your local environment. Um, we are available to stay on the line for a little bit of time if you would like any advice or you have any questions about choosing a tree that's still available on the order form. Um, or if you have any questions about your backyard conditions and, and we can give you a small suggestion. Um, myself and my coworker Brianne is on the line and Kelsey is here too. So we can, we can stick around for a little bit if anybody has any questions for that chat box. Uh, one Pleasure. question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Kelsey. One question came in from Sarah who asked, how far away from a fence do you recommend, for example, for an apple tree? And um, apple trees are, are unique because you want to do whatever you can to prevent any pests or fungus or anything like that from affecting it. So with apple trees, you want to give them a good amount of space because that can improve the airflow. So our recommendation is probably no less than three meters from a fence if you can unless it's one of the ones that are trained to grow along a fence. Now we're not off offering any of those this year, but we have had those in the past where um, the branches are sort of trained to grow in a horizontal pattern. Uh, but in general, the more sunlight and the more air that you can provide to your fruit trees, the better production you will see and the fewer pests. And that's always important. You want the best yield for your, your buck, right? So there's another question from Tanya who said, is it true that you need to plant two fruit trees to get fruit? Great question. Uh, we, we do get that one a lot. Um, it depends on the type of fruit tree that it is. Now there are some fruit trees that are what is called self-pollinating. 
uh, naturally self-pollinating. And then there are some trees where they take multiple types of fruit and they graft it onto one rootstock and so you get multiple varieties on one tree and then there are fruit trees where you need two varieties and so it does really depend on the specific type uh, tanya if you happen to order any of the trees from our depot and, and you're asking about some of those in particular then uh, let us know in in the question box and we're happy to try to pull up the record of which one it is in general most of the apple trees you 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 always need to uh, there's often lots of fruit trees in different neighborhoods though so you can um, sometimes rely on your neighbors if you know that they have some too Uh, so there was a question, are there any Eastern red bud left? Unfortunately, no, they were sold out within 12 hours, Norma, but uh, like Juliana mentioned, be sure to contact us and we hope to offer another tree giveaway soon. And um, as soon as you see that email come out, be sure to go and, and try to order one because they always are among the first ones to go. They're so popular. The best way, like Brian um, mentioned, is to, to log on to our um, website and sign up for our newsletter. That's the best way to, to get those emails about when the depots would be available. That's right. Uh, so Jennifer asked, how much space between a maple and a house foundation? So um, I'm going to put a link in the chat box right now that actually uh, provided some great information for determining the distance that you need to plant. So I'm going to mute myself and type. Um, I, I provided it to one of the other uh, participants here earlier. So I'm going to just share that link with you and you can check that out, okay? That's great. You always want to make sure that you're giving them the optimal amount of space to grow. Um, and you also don't want to have any damage done to your house because of your, your love for, for trees. <laughs> want to just, uh, if you ever think of any other questions that you just didn't think of right away, um, you can always reach out to us. So, uh, Julianne, if you want to share your email. Yeah, absolutely. So I can, I can type that in the chat box, but it's just schools with an S on the end at reforestlondon.ca. If you have any questions, um, if you are looking to again talk about depots anymore, um, relief, it's relief at reforestlondon.ca. And again, the best way to stay most up to date and current uh, with any new depots that do come up would be to sign up for our newsletter. Oh, one more question. Uh, when we order a tree, will it tell us if it's still available? Uh, yes. So if you go on to the order form, uh, I can see that there are still a few native species left. Uh, there's basswood, yellow birch, northern hackberry, uh, silver maple, white spruce, black walnut, and bur oak. So there's still several types left. And um, I think I saw that hazelnut was available. I could be wrong on that. Um, so anything that is shorter out of that list, I would say the shortest ones on that list would be um, yellow birch perhaps and hackberry, although they're not really small trees, they, but they would be the smallest of that list, I think, Juliana. Yes, no, they um, definitely, yes. Yeah, and then I just see we missed a question earlier, sorry, uh, from Charlotte ha uh house. Charlotte, uh, sorry I missed your question. Um, you asked about a small tree or shrub for clay, full sun, and dry conditions. So the only small thing that we have left would be hazelnut, um, but it does tend to prefer moist and well-drained soil. Um, so that might not be a good fit from what we have available. But in general, a small tree for clay, full sun, and dry conditions um, would probably be something like a blue beech or um, even a service berry would do very yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Service berry would do really, really well. And so definitely check back uh, when we uh, do release our next depot listing and we'll, we'll be sure to have some more um, variety of, of what's left. Most of what we do have left now is, is the taller stuff. Great species and they're, they're awesome for Basswood's great for attracting any birds to your backyards, any woodpeckers, they're wonderful for that purpose. <laughs> Thank you, we hope you guys uh, learned something along the way. All right, I guess if you're okay, we can sign off and um, have a great night, everybody. Thanks so much Thank for joining you. us.